The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Media Match. A roundtable of Cowboys insiders. Dropping wisdom. And offering sizzling takes. On the current state of your Dallas Cowboys. Now your host, Nui Scruggs. Media Mash right here on DallasCowboys.com. This is where we bring in a round table of fantastic reporters who give you their unbiased take on what they're seeing with the Dallas Cowboys. Got they cover the team. We got Jean Jacques Taylor. We got Saad Youssef, the master. Saad Youssef, you got his degree from U and T, <laughs> master of uh, education. Correct, sir. Uh, yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, well done. Well done. And we got Jacques Taylor. Uh, and Clarence Hill. Longest serving tenure beat writer in uh, Cowboys history. Is that is that history or just Not recently? That's history. It's okay. Really? Yeah. No, I looked it up because you know people say whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you write the book on it. You write that doing that reset book. No, research? because what happened was Bob St. John really had it at the Dallas Morning at the uh, Dallas Morning News back in the day. <laughs> then I surpassed Bob St. John, and then I got off the beat, uh, became <laughs> beat writer emeritus, and then <laughs> Chill just man. never left. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it's, it's, I did check. So. This longevity, man, it's okay. It don't Archibald mean great. It don't mean greatness. I, you know, it don't mean greatness. You know, longevity don't equal greatness. It damn sure don't. Uh, I don't know if we look at the Hall of Fame. Well, guys, I miss all the to, conversation. We're well, not talking about general. Frank Gore right now. <laughs> 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 We're not going to talk about Benny Frank Testa Gore. Benny Testaverde, right? <laughs> And is you know, let me shut up. I was there the last time Vincenzo. No, that wasn't the last time. One of the few times when Vinny won a, a playoff game for Bill Belichick, the only only playoff game Bill ever won in Cleveland. I was there. Vinny threw two touchdown passes, beat Bar- Parcells and the Patriots. So, all right, let's start off uh, with some news that could affect the Dallas Cowboys. Breaking news, and that's Pete Carroll is out as the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. Fourteen years, ten playoff appearances. He's going to stay on as an advisor. So when <laughs> we think not about his idea, bro. I don't know. I mean, hey man, they keep you on advice. I mean, he's, on a, he's 137 years old. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, I apologize. No, no, no. Um, go ahead, Claire. I mean, what it really means for for the Cowboys and why it's Jermaine to to this show in this segment is because the favorite is Dan Quinn, and now Dan Quinn is already the hot on the list of four different teams now. Washington, uh, the Commanders, uh, the Panthers, uh, the Chargers, and the Titans made a request to see to to speak to Dan Quinn about the head, o- head coaching opening today. At the Mike Vrabel uh, was let go yesterday, and certainly the Pete Carroll thing came down today. Actually, right before we went to the locker room, the bombshell dropped, and it's the easy, most logical assumption that Dan Quinn would be the leading candidate there. He was the architect of the Legion of Boom defense. He was the architect of the defense that won Super Bowls. Uh, it would be like bringing family home. You and win so, the press conference? All of that. So you, you're bringing family home. You know, still have to go through a lot of processes, you know, uh, before they can make that hire. But And they haven't yet to make formal contact because it just happened today. But, yeah, Dan Quinn could – could if, if there was a chance of Dan Quinn finally leaving the Cowboys going somewhere else, Seattle is the place. So I think about – Pete as an advisor. So if they keep Pete as an advisor and, and John Schneider is still the general manager, this is a guy they've worked with. This yes. is a guy yeah. they, they, they won know. a Super Bowl with. And to me, if I'm the GM, and, and we all know how GMs work now, they're trying to find a coach they can work with. Right. They've got that together. And while it failed at USC, they kept trying to find another Pete disciple who could carry it on here. I think Dan Quinn makes the most sense. And while he's been picky about where he goes, for Dan Quinn, there's got to be comfort in saying, I know these people, yeah. I know this area, I know the program. So, yeah. to me, this this just makes a whole lot of sense. And he had success as a head coach before. So Yeah, um, and being picky, saying, I don't want to go to Arizona, and that mess with that ownership and, and some of the other spots in Seattle is two different things. I mean, Seattle is, if he had to pick an ideal spot, I'm sure Seattle would be where he would want to go back to. And not just that, but the fact that Pete Carroll been there 14 seasons, every year ain't been great, so they're not quick trigger. You know, he got some capital because he won the Super Bowl, but every year is not quick trigger just because you had a bad year or a bad stretch. I also think you have you have a, a quarterback that can uh, that can play. I mean, Geno's not, you know, it's not Justin Herbert. It's not the Chargers opening, but, I mean, you're also not going to Washington where – the pros are different. You have a t- number two pick, and you can maybe find your guy. But over here, you have you have a 
place no. that you can land, you have an organizational structure, and you have things that are kind of going your way. So, which again brings us back to the Cowboys and 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 and, and the current head coach here. I mean, let's be honest, Jerry Jones, Dan Quinn has been an apple of Jerry Jones' eye the last couple of years. You know, he kind of threw made things uncomfortable for Mike his first year when he talked about Dan Quinn one day being the coach of the Cowboys, why he wouldn't let him go, he didn't want to let him go, even though Mike was the coach of the Cowboys. You know, that was in, that was after the 2021 season. You know, and certainly he did – he gave him, I think, more money to keep him last year. We asked him about that in training camp last year. He wouldn't actually right. tell us how much, but he, he certainly wanted to keep him. So, um, say the Cowboys lose Green Bay. No. Do you let Dan walk? <laughs> yes. You let Dan walk, you keep Mike. Yes. yes. Okay, absolutely. I'm just I'm just I'm just asking the question. Yes, yes. It's exactly. on the table. I, I, it, it will be on the table. I, I did a commentary at it. I put it up on, on, on my social media page. To get rid of Mike McCarthy means you need to replace two positions. You would need to replace your head coach and your offensive coordinator. If you think about just go through C.D. Lamb's numbers right now. C.D. Lamb finished the 2023 regular season leading all receivers in targets, receptions, yards after <coughs> catch, scrimmage yards, overall touchdowns, 20-plus yard receptions, and ranked second in receiving yards. This has been C.D. Lamb's best career effort right. going. Dak Prescott is going to finish top three, no less than top five in the MVP vote. That is with Mike McCarthy calling the plays. If Mike McCarthy was just the play caller here and not the head coach, he'd be on everybody's list right now for a job interview. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that slow it guy from Houston is getting these interviews and the Johnson guy up there in Detroit, Mike McCarthy, just based on a play caller here, would be the same thing. Even though CD had to cuss him out to get the ball. Yeah, I mean, he first of all, I mean, okay. That was not Mike's opening season plan. Can, can okay, I, the plan I, was I want to run the ball, protect the defense. And what what what, okay. what does anybody at a what, – what do good people do, good leaders do? You adjust the game plan, right? I understand that, but that doesn't mean. Uh, again, I hear you. And Abraham listen, Lincoln listen, adjusts the game plan. I think, plan, I think, I think you know? Mike. I mean, he can adjust the game plan. We're going. <laughs> yeah, he can adjust the game plan. You know. I mean, I, I hear you, and I think Mike has done a great job. He doesn't get enough credit for going to like a butt coming. Twelve and five. 12, I'm like Jerry. Jerry had a butt this weekend. You know, but. 12 and 5, 12, he does not get enough credit for what he's done, how he's managed the team. Mm -hmm. Certainly, even last year, winning four games without Dak Prescott, we see this year that doesn't happen. Uh, but the bottom line is this. The goal is not to put up stats. The goal is not to get CD off. The goal is not to get Dak off. The goal is to win in the playoffs, win Super Bowl. And it's and yes, so, it starts so, this week. But you've got, got you've put yourself in the position again, right now again, to get there. My point is this. If they go one and done, okay. all bets are off. I hear you. I understand okay. it. I see your point of view. If they go one and done, I don't have time to make a bad have a bad time. I'm eighty some years old. I'm trying to win now. I'm just saying that that's that's not, that, those are legitimate. We talked before so, the season so, training so, camp. So, those were things that are on the table. So when he got when he got rid of when he got rid of um Jason Garrett, not Jason Garrett, when he got rid of um Kellen Moore and took over, it's like if I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna do it my way. And we talked to him in the walk-off today. You know, Todd tried to ask about him betting on himself. And I asked him in the walk-off today. He said, that I wasn't there betting on himself, but I was believing in myself. So, and it's not just about the play calling, because it wasn't, it was about the play calling getting you to the next level. It was about the offense getting you to the next level. It's not about having a better offense. It's about having an offense and a football team that can win in the playoffs and get you to the Super Bowl. That's the goal. I think I think what what also carries a lot of weight here is the way Dak talks about McCarthy and the way Dak talks about how much of a impact McCarthy has had on the offense and the way that he plays and not just his his play. I mean, we've talked to Dak on the record, off the record about just, you know, the way that routes have changed, understanding and meetings and all that kind of stuff has changed and I think I think when your franchise quarterback who you're absolutely going to sign to an extension uh has that kind of vote of confidence in McCarthy, I don't think you just let him go. He had that kind of love for Kellen Moore. Had no, a, but yes, he did. He, yes, he did. No, hold on, hold on. And he he did. I was here from day one with Kellen Moore to day end with Kellen Moore. He loved the deck out of Kellen Moore. He did, Keelan. but but he, and, and he does and he doesn't and he doesn't <laughs> deny that even today. What? But it's different with McCarthy. He even talks about how it's different I, when you have the talent versus the wisdom I, and the I, experience. I, I understand that, but, but my point is, we up. all say this. We all we all loved our wife at one time. Okay, I'm just saying that that, that thing. <laughs> well, some of us are divorced. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm let's just keep it real. He's still married to Mike. Okay. Mm-hmm. If if they moved on and they had another coach, he'd be saying the same thing about that coach. I mean, that's, that so, it comes so you, with it. You say he got the Tinder profile ready. I'm just I'm just bumble dog. Just just keep swiping right. And hey, listen. And he listen. I remember him playing catch with Jason Garrett after every practice at training camp. Loved the heck out of Jason Garrett and what Jason Garrett did for his career. They used to play catch. Toss, long toss. I mean, that's that's part of it. And he's going to love you as, while you're here. That, you know, but somebody else come in, you have success, you're going to say the same thing. I'm just saying that, again, we're all on the same page. Mike has done a great job, wonderful job. He, You're right, what he's done, and I always – Thought people were crazy when they were killing Mike because he got rid of Kellen. They're like, Mike has always been a better coordinator than Kellen. He's been a hot guy. He was, he's done all that. Don't act like Kellen knows more. Don't act like Kellen knows more about Mike football and offense than Mike does. I I said that last summer, so I understand that and I understand why his wisdom made a difference. But at the end of the day, it's about can you get to the next level? And he's put the team in a position. Yeah. To get there. This is this is one of their better opportunities. I think and, and I heard I read where Stephen A. Smith said yeah. this is the Cowboys' stop, best opportunity stop, stop. to get there. It I, is their best though. Uh, and I, I don't I, I disagree. That, they was, to get to the NFC title game for sure. It's their best opportunity. What he about said when to, it was the number one seed? Right. When he said to get to the Super Bowl. Uh, Uncle Wade. That, no, that no, he, 13 he, I think he's talking about under under in in the deck. Situation? Are you talking about going back since the Super Bowl? Yeah. No, I think 2007 was the best opportunity. Yes, because so, because a, a, a wild card team stole their destiny. Right. You know, that's 2007 was the best opportunity. Who, who, I mean, they, who they I, beat I, by I, ten and eleven points? Yeah. No, I, I I certainly think of this iteration under the Dak regime. Um, since Dak has been there, this is their best opportunity they're, to get there for his rookie year. Yeah, yeah. but that was it was a rookie quarterback. There. It was Aaron Rodgers. You he, know, I, it, he he out he he went toe to toe with Aaron. I, 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 he I didn't would, lose that game. You know, but Aaron Rodgers won it, and that was on Marinelli. Okay, whatever. The point is, but, he still but, won it. You still were playing against a Hall of Famer legend who, who made Hall of Fame plays, and so the, that was. I'm just talking about you. You don't have Aaron Rodgers in front of you right now. No, so yeah. we're asking we're asking to compare the two. You are at home. You had a chance to win your two games at home. Uh, you should be the favorite. You don't have Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady. But I'm just saying they had it in 2016. You had a Hall of Famer with Scoop Bowl winning champions quarterback in that front Packer of you. That team didn't have any running backs that day. You had Aaron Rodgers in front of you. You don't have Aaron Rodgers in front of you. That's the difference, in my opinion. I'm sorry. You don't have that resume in front of you. You were still, you still had a better team and the ability to win. I they didn't do it. I don't know if you had a better team. I disagree team. with you. You didn't have Dan Quinn a defense coordinator then. <laughs> He had Rod Marinelli, who went 0-16 with Detroit. <laughs> Which is why he gave up that third and 30. <laughs> on the 33-yard game to a tight end. Jared Cook, I was there on Not the sideline. Not even wide receiver. on the sideline. <laughs> tight end. I was there on the sideline. You know, you, you, and your boy, Mr. Heath, almost get there. You know, you, and you he got there. And, 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 and I don't you know how Aaron Rodgers held and, on to and the And ball. offensively, you weren't aggressive enough early on in the game. And, yeah. you, you know, got behind, you know. It was Jason, it was Jason whole, Garrett. That. So, there was a lot of things Jason, going Jason, on. Yes. I think you have a better staff. Okay, yes, yeah, okay, yeah. I'll give you that. Yes. <laughs> I forget, Jason Garrett was <laughs> the coach. Yes. Just say uncle. Just say uncle. Come on, guys. Just say uncle. Fight. Just say uncle. Let's finish this fight. Finish this fight. Yes, stop it. <laughs> but, I mean, listen, it's, it's out there. I mean, the bottom line, is, another thing here is that there's no big bad wolf. I mean, the 49ers are good. They haven't won no titles. Why? 49ers have won a title since the Cowboys won one. People don't don't like to say that. No, they've, they've been, been to, the, to the Super Bowl. Been they've there been there don't mean the They're like the Eagles won the Super Bowl last year. They, it doesn't mean anything. If you don't, I, 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 I always thought that it was about the rings. It's about winning. It's not getting there. Uh, when you, I mean, there's we just dif- differentiating between. I mean, to say that there's no no big bad wolf. I mean, when they done kicked your butt like they have, yeah, they the big bad wolf. Now that don't mean you can't beat them, because uh, no, it they say- were the big bad wolf of '92 and they went and beat them. So they could be. I mean, they're not an invisible team, but yeah, it's gonna be. I'm uh, just saying this is wide open as it can, and if the Cowboys take care of business at home, so we're talking about them being at home and their home dominance in 16 straight. They feel good about going wherever they got to go. Listen, you go, if you go to San Francisco, despite the history with a chance to, to NFC Championship game to get to the Super Bowl, you'll take that all day. Especially well, yeah. because I think San Francisco is a team that right now, unquestionably, I think they're they're the best team in the NFL right now. But... Uh, 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 but uh, uh, Stop it, man. But Stop it. Stop that. Did you, did you, did you miss minute. the Baltimore let this, game? Let this man Bill, explain did, himself. Did yes. you miss the Baltimore game? 
Are you seriously going to sit here and act like it's some egregious thing to say the 49ers are the best team? Like, get in, out of here with in that. The Come NFL? on, man. Yeah, in the damn NFL. Now, I can say the NFC, but the no, NFL. No, in the NFL. Didn't Baltimore beat him by three touches? Yo, Bill Polian over here. Man. If I'm going to beat him by three touches. Okay, about? even if you disagree, like, stop <laughs> acting like it's some egregious thing. When they got Calm beat down by, with all that. When they got beat Calm by, down with all that, all right? When they got beat by three touches just two weeks ago? I said, let the man explain this. Yeah. The San Francisco 49ers, regardless of what they are, though, as a team, I think they are really <laughs> one injury away from their entire outlook changing. We've seen them in terms of Debo, Trent Williams. Whenever their guys go down, those team, th- their team changes. And I think that's one thing that you don't know what's going to happen in the next two games. So, and so, so Saad, I asked this question. <laughs> what did you see when you saw Baltimore and the 49ers that makes you think that the 49ers are better than the Ravens? I, I because I'm looking at the consistency of the entire season, the into what I've seen the entire year from the Ravens and from the 49ers. I understand what was head to head in that game, but I'm saying if, if they're playing in a neutral site at the Super Bowl and they both get there, I, I'll probably pick the 49ers to win. Okay, picking them to win versus saying right now they're better than Baltimore when Baltimore has when Baltimore beat them up in their own house. I, I don't get that. Cardinals I mean, better than the Cowboys. Well, now. <laughs> just asking. I mean, they beat them, right? If they beat, beat them bad, if they had to beat them at AT&T Stadium, we'd have a different conversation. Cardinals better than the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> Giants better than the Eagles. <laughs> yeah, right now they are. They beat them. Tw- yeah, they are. They are better than the Eagles. I mean, Eagles are not playing well. No. The, Cal- uh, the Baltimore is playing, but so what, what, Baltimore, what Baltimore, Baltimore did in bludgeoning. T- San Francisco and Miami back to back week has been the most impressive run of the season. There, you, I don't know what you mean consistency all season. Baltimore's been the best team and, and showed that in, in those two games. But anyway, the, the 49ers certainly have been the best team in the NFC, and that's really what was germane to, to the Cowboys. But again, it, it, it's as open as it's been. I mean, the Cowboys, you look at what they have Detroit, uh, the Rams. I don't think there's a juggernaut. I think Baltimore has been better than the – I mean, Fortnite has been better than the Cowboys the last couple of years, but it's not an impossible hill to climb. We're going to take our first break. We're going to take our first break, boy. It's fun show with uh, Jean-Jacques Taylor, Saad Youssef, Clarence Hill, Nui Scruggs, Media Math. This is what we do. We, we debate topics right here on <laughs> DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Don't put off getting your oil changed, Dallas. Take 5 Oil Change. A proud partner of the Cowboys is faster than you think. There's no appointment needed and no waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take 5 is so fast, you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take 5's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Dallas area. And remember, at Take 5, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. Take 5, the official oil change of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code Cowboys. VIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboys VIP. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back Back, back, to Media Mash. Media Mash right here on DallasCowboys.com radio. Clarence Hill, 
Saad Youssef, Jacques Taylor, I'm Nui Scruggs here. Cowboys uh, placing several members on the NFL PA first team uh, all pro list. Uh, you've got CeeDee Lamb joining Tyreek Hill as wide receivers. At left guard, there was a tie between Joel Batonio of Cleveland and Tyler Smith of the Cowboys. All right. right guard is Zach Martin. Defensively, Deron Bland made the list along with Pat Sertan as corners. And then you've got kicker Brandon Aubrey on the list. Hey, what, what happened to, to 11, though? The Lions. The Lions. Ah. That guy. So, on off-ball linebacker, Roquan Smith of Baltimore, Fred Werner made it there. Yeah, yeah. Edge rushers were Miles Garrett and Max Crosby. So, T.J. Watt did not make the list despite leading the league in 19 wow. sacks. So, um, you've got – and I saw one person who had their defensive player of the year list out and had Watt one and, and – uh, no, it was – it was Garrett one and Parsons second, or it was Watt one and Parsons second. So, anyway, this is the NFL PA list. Uh, is, uh, and it's the players. That's the play. It's the second year that the players have left Michael Parsons off. What do we make Second of straight. This is their second time. To, I mean, I mean, I think it's, when you got edges, man, there's Miles Garrett, there's TJ Watt, there's Micah, uh, Max Crabs is outstanding. I mean, there's the competition at that is is intense, and uh, I can't sit here and be moaning and groaning. Given the competition at that spot, if he gets left off, and I listed off-ball linebacker too. So if they oh, he's not to, an off-ball linebacker. Um, I was just saying, if he wanted to go there, but so they decided, you know, you know, no, he an edge. So yeah, he he's trying to get paid do, like an edge. Well, do, I mean, do the, we have a problem? I mean, I I, I, it's, it's not we have a problem. Is is Micah has a problem? Micah's upset. I'm sure he, he don't like it. You know, you want to be recognized by your players, or your, your fellow players, and and I, I think that there is a problem in a sense because you're right. Uh, from a number standpoint, it's hard to quibble. But turn on the tape. Turn on the tape. What, and, what and are we who, saying? Are we saying that they don't that those guys don't deserve it? I didn't say. I mean, when you say turn on the tape, the intimation turn, is that turn on. If you it, turn it, on the it, tape, you'll see that Mike is better than these guys. It, it, it's like it's like earlier this year when when um, uh, what's your boy? Um, they used to be with the the, uh, the Jets. Uh, he's a commentator now. Um, the Bart Scott. Bart Scott. Bart Scott. Bart Scott's crazy, but tried to compare uh, the Eagles' edge rusher um, number seven, Hassan, Hassan Reddick, Reddick. Hassan Reddick. To, to Parsons. And I said he's not in the same category. And that doesn't mean that that Reddick is not a good pass rusher. He don't do what Michael does. He don't draw the double teams. Michael does. You know, he's not the same impact player that Mike. Yes, he, he has a lot of sacks. And so when, when I look at these other guys and I say, yes, they got numbers, are they Micah? Do they, you know, when you add up all the things that they do and, and, and what they open up for other people, and when you talk about hits on the quarterback and pass rush win way, which you don't – most people don't look at that. They just look at sacks. They look at – even the players. That's, that's what kills me about it. Everybody thinks the players know everything. Even the players, they're going to look at the, who's leading the sacks – Okay, that's where my vote goes. It's like most media well, members. T.J. Watt didn't they, get it then. They, they, they do, yeah, they do the same thing. I'm just saying, though, that that, it, that's, that is interesting, though. But So, yeah, on, on paper you can say all the same category, but but if you're picking a team, who are you picking? You're picking them over, Michael? So, the, here's the question. My answer would be I ain't watched them all. I watch Michael every snap. I ain't watched the other cats every snap. Is, would you take my, Max Crosby off the list side and put Mike? In there? Yeah. I would. I, I don't really have a problem with Miles Garrett, but I, I, I would take Mike over Max Crosby. I'd probably take T.J. Watt over Max Crosby too. Over Max Crosby? Yeah, because yeah, the, the, the two, the two right here, the two right here are Miles Garrett and and Max Crosby, and I think we're consensus that that Miles Garrett is, is is that guy. It should be on that list. Yeah, probably over Max Crosby. Because we're looking at two spots: Max Crosby, I just saw Max Harris. Crosby harassed the hell out of Peck. Pat uh, Pat Mahomes. Yes, of course. And that's the game you saw in this game you remember. Because right. yeah. I said I don't watch him every snap. Okay. So, so, I mean, anyway, I'm just – I'm, I'm. I also watched him uh, beat up uh, beat up the coast and tell the quarterback every time, hey, little ass boy. <laughs> so, and, 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 and I go back to a quote that, that Duck Collins, uh, when he was a commentator, was talking to the media about the All-Star game, the NBA All-Star game. And – and people were talking about some snubs of the Mavericks. And, and Doug said, look, if you play at a high level long enough, you will probably miss one you should have made, and you'll probably make one you shouldn't. 
and maybe that's just the time for Micah Parsons. But along the way here, um, this, this is this is this is what it is. So what's the player? So Micah Parsons didn't talk to. You. Will he talk tomorrow? You think? He's supposed. He's expected to talk tomorrow. Micah didn't talk. Um, Tony Pollard did talk. It's his normal day, and uh, we we actually got. Uh, Stephon Gilmore, we came in the locker room. You know, he's really the, the, the person to watch this week. And, you know, uh, Zach Martin didn't play last week. He was ill. But every, from all intents and purposes, he's good to go. He's feeling better. He went through the walkthrough. He didn't have a practice. He didn't practice today because it was a normal veteran day off. But there's no question that, that he's going to play. We talked to Tyler Smith. He said that uh, his, his foot was being better. You know, it was getting better from the plantar fasciitis. Uh, he was limited today. He hopes to do more uh, and tomorrow and test it out. He's looking forward to playing. But, again, with, with this team, with this Packers team and that receiving core and that quarterback, uh, the one to watch is certainly Stephon Gilmore, who suffered a separated shoulder, dislocated shoulder in the Washington game. He's, he's you know, he hasn't practiced all week, uh, doesn't plan on practicing this week. These, they're going to be cautious with him. But he said he's going to give it a go. He may wear a harness. But he's going to try to give it a go. He plans on playing on Saturday. I think Sunday. the biggest thing with him is not pass coverage, it's run defense. Can you come up and support the run when they when they run it that way? Uh, because obviously you got to stick your shoulder in there. And if you uh, let Green Bay get his running game going, now you got problems. I, th I think uh, I think the depth that they have at cornerback also just really requires him to play because you're already down one, and you know once you went down Trayvon, I mean now you're playing with the three that you really want to play with. You really want to have Gilmore, uh, Bland, and Lewis, and you want to have those three. You don't want to you don't want to dig any deeper on your depth chart. So Green Bay, especially because it's receiving core. Because you go back to last year's game and 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 it, really we can dig more deep in the We just talked to Dak about last year's game as well, but. That was the difference in that game when the quarterbacks got hurt and and, and they were playing with me and you out there. And, 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 uh, Brown, <laughs> Brown went down. Brown, yeah, I'm mean, seriously. I mean that that, that 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 was that was part of the dirty little secret of that game why they gave up that lead too because the, the secondary so, couldn't do anything to stop him. Brown went out and his replacement was not good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. place for not yeah. good. Watson went out there and had it with a hat trick. I yeah. mean, it was his was killing them over the top. And so, yeah, that, that, that's important. He's no longer here. That player's, the player's no longer here. But, you know, one reason why Dak is so great, uh, tomorrow's his day to talk, you know, but he sat and came in there and was talking. We was talking ball, you know, and talking the difference and uh, his understanding of the game. We talked about, you know, we talked earlier about his, his connection with, with Mike McCarthy and the difference between he and Kellen Moore and what he knows more about. And you know, we go back to that, some of those interceptions in that game, he said that, you know, one thing they're doing this year is – they're showing video to the receivers of what Dak sees, so they understand what he sees. So they have a, you know, when they talk about, you know, everybody understanding the whole play and the concept of the play, what everybody's trying to do, they did, they weren't always on the same page last year, and that led to a few of the interceptions. And certainly, it started, you know, with a couple of those interceptions in that Green Bay game. Uh, that won't happen this year, you know, because CD instead of cutting under, he'll cut behind. You know, that that play with the middle, that reception of the middle, I was CD did not run that route right. And then he didn't see what Dak saw. And so he said those type of things will happen this year. They, that, that's you know been part of the key of them not having the same interceptions they had last year. They have a better understanding of the concept and what Dak sees, and they're all on the same page. And, again, it goes back to that Green Bay game. So Green Bay comes in here having finished the year strong. Jordan Love is second in the NFL in passing touchdowns behind Dak Prescott. First year as the starting quarterback, 32 touchdown passes. They can run the football. I talked to Dan Quinn. You were there. We got, you claims you were there, too, when I asked that question about, you know, what are you seeing in the run game? And he talked about the ability for them to have play action passing there and, and what you just talked about, about Gilmore coming up in the run game here. And a crowd that is going to be big, if Green Bay can help their quarterback, they got to run the ball here. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, football ain't really never changed, which is you have to stop the run. Even though teams don't run it as much anymore, it don't matter. You have to stop the run, make them one-dimensional, then you go take care of business. Uh, uh, they get their running game going, it's going to be a, it's going to be an all-day game. If they don't, then you got a chance for, you know, third-quarter knockout. And past years don't always have a whole lot to do with what's going on this year, but – just a crazy trivia thing of most yards per game against the Cowboys all time. And number three is Walter Payton. Number two, Barry Sanders. And number one, Aaron Jones. 
So Aaron Jones has had a lot of success against the Cowboys mm-hmm. in his past. I remember him waving goodbye going to yeah. the end zone. Yeah. UTEP. Uh, yeah. So I, I think uh, I think yeah, you're right. It's going to be absolutely crucial. And I think and I think Dan Quinn. We talked about how he's up for all these jobs and how great he's done. I mean, this is first year quarterback, first year starting quarterback, first playoff game. This is Dan Quinn's time to shine and the defense and everything like that, too. Oh, yeah, you got to take advantage of him. And I I, I know um, he's a guy that holds the ball. That I think they can get the ball out. Unlike Aaron Rodgers on that play a couple years ago when Jeff, he should have <laughs> knocked that ball out of his hand before he made it. Yeah, this is a guy that he, he's a good player, but he's loose with the football sometimes when he scrambles and when he's passing. He doesn't always keep it right here. So there's, there's an opportunity to get the ball out. But I would say one thing about this, though, is let's, let's give Green Bay Packers organization credit. They know how to find a quarterback. They know how to identify and find a quarterback. I also piggyback on what you said there. The way they've gone about it is where most teams won't. Hey, we've got a quarterback here who along the way is starting to show us that uh, we don't know. We don't, we're not sure about their long-term intentions. So we'll draft a guy and let the guy sit. Aaron Rodgers sat behind Favre. Jordan Love sat behind Rodgers. Both quarterbacks learn from the other and I think if you're Green Bay right now despite all the criticisms the GM Brian Gunnikins took man they don't have to deal with any of Aaron's stuff that we're seeing out here right now they didn't have to hire any of Aaron's former receivers or bring in his coach they are able to run their organization Aaron free and they look their future looks bright. The Jets' future is – and, and, you know, it's even more impressive to me with Jordan Love and Aaron Rodgers than it was with Rodgers and Favre because back then it was pretty commonplace to let your starter – to let your high draft pick, first-round pick kind of sit for a year, two years. Nowadays, I mean, you get drafted in the first round, you're you're pretty much – in. you you got to play. And they they went against the grain kind of and went old school and let Jordan Love sit and let him run r- learn from Aaron Rodgers and and it's paying off. In some way, I saw Trey Lance in, in the locker room today, and I wonder long term if if the Cowboys can can develop him in in a fashion in which the Packers develop Jordan Love. I mean, obviously, we're we're not going to see that um, anytime soon. I think uh, with with the way Dak Prescott's playing, but I just wonder, can they develop the the, the young man in that fashion? I think his uh, his uh, his value will come based on what we know as of today. His value will come whether they can get him and make him play well enough in the preseason to make somebody go, oh, he can he might be that dude and get a second round pick or perhaps a first, uh, because I don't think Dak's going anywhere for f- four or five years. <laughs> or and and this is. Just now, you know all that happens. All that has to happen is do the uh, is Dak missed three games. He come in, he played great, which, which is why I was gonna say it's what Cooper Rush did last yeah. year. Also, yep. but like Cooper Rush was a career backup. I think the comparable <coughs> there would be Jimmy Garoppolo when Brady was suspended for four games. Jimmy Garoppolo had good preseasons, second round pick, came in, had a good game and a half before he got hurt, and then Jacoby Brissett had to come in. But that was enough for the shipping them to San Francisco yeah. and big contract. All it took was that one one and a half game. This league is so starved for quarterbacks, man. If you just show them a little leg, they want to date you. <laughs> <laughs> Again, he did show them a little leg, and they didn't like it. I mean, I, I mean, I, I hear I hear what we're saying. Well, he got hurt, then he got supplanted. He, yeah, but there, there, there was tape out of him. You know, you, you know, did nobody was offering more than the Cowboys offering that draft pick for him. I mean, he, you know, he still played. He, there's still tape out there. They, he was still a, quote, first top three pick uh, that was on that was up for grabs, and it wasn't like it was a whole lot of suitors. So, no. He didn't show enough leg. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> he, he started. He had some games. Had some so tape. He still and, had that ankle length. <laughs> I, 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 I'll, I'll throw this out here because I was listening to uh, Chris Sims. NBC Sports and and you know, Chris and Kyle Shanahan go way back to, to Texas when they played together. And Chris Chris understands. They got tattoos each other in the league. Yes. I don't know about all yes. that. That's, they that's do. True. That is true. I mean, I know it's true, but I don't know about all that. No, that, that's true. But anyway, they they're, they're very close. He understands yeah. his offense. And when they traded up to three, Chris Sims was adamant. They got Mac Jones. Mac Jones is the guy. He fits what he does. Kirk Cousins. This is he can run that system. And the Trey Lance thing, he didn't get it. And the 
was that collaboration that everybody's trying to do in the NFL? So the collaboration ended up winning out, and they took Trey Lance. He just didn't fit. And so I say to you about, about him, okay, whatever he did with the 49ers, that's what he did there. But what if Mike McCarthy can find a way to utilize the play? That's the hope. I would say if you're if you're in the Trey Lance business here with the Cowboys, hey, we think we've got a system and we can take advantage of what the player does that'll be a little bit different than what did not work for him in San Francisco. I, I, I agree. Listen, I like Trey Lance, great kid, love him as but, a person. I know, but you you remember Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes rookie year? Yeah, Alex Smith. There, people raved about him in practice. Raved about him. Alex Smith's a core starter, but. Patrick Mahomes was doing some wonderful things with practice. Oh, they raved about Tony Romo in practice, too. They did. No, they did. And I'm just saying that I don't know that there's been a lot of raving. So I'm not, you know, ain't been no, you know, ain't no been no poo pooing, but I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. I don't, I haven't heard anybody just talk about him tearing up the defense. Okay. That's all I'm saying. I mean, no, listen, no, this, you know, I think Jerry was throwing some stuff against the wall, okay? Here's a chance to get, which they love to get a quarterback on the cheap. You know, we're gonna give up a fourth, fifth round pick. You know, maybe we we can we can find some here. But to sit up here and, and you know, and, and there's so much talk about him because of where the Forty Nineers drafted him. Sure. Okay, and and that's really what it is. But you know, we're I we got to find out if there's a lot of substance there. And, and he's he's young. Was he 23? Yeah, he's something like that. He's so, so I mean, this yeah. this is your. I'm I'm not poo pooing your point. Um, this is. This is the bet you've made. Young guy, can we grow him? Can we right, get something it's a bet. out of him? And, I mean, I look at Cooper Rush coming out of Central Michigan. I would have never thought he would have done as many things as he's done in his career with the Cowboys and winning the kind of games and having having the kind of uh, career he's had. I, in fact, I'm surprised that he wasn't scooped up on the market from the standpoint of we see – when I look at who's got backup quarterbacks, that somebody would have put a little bit of money into Cooper Rush and bring him in. Yeah, but he, but, but he has a choice on that too. And I'm like, if I'm going to be a backup, I'd rather be here being a backup. Okay. I mean, I'm just not going to go somewhere else and be a backup. So, I, I bottom line, I – I mean, I'm nobody's going to pay $10 million for him to be a backup. No, though. no. But, but I'm just interested to see what could Trey Lance do. Well, give Chase Daniel into. money. You know, Chase Daniel made a lot of money. <laughs> Southlake Zone. One of the best careers of all time. <laughs> South, I won't say careers. He's one of the best agents. Okay, you got a heck of a negotiating agent. You know, right ain't no Chase Daniel money. Uh, you know, good, good money. Yeah. Kyle Orton, when he got all that money, was that him? Yeah. Yeah. Kyle Orton, you know, golfing and then just looking at the playbook for a little bit. So I'll, I'll just be interested. Can they? Can can they develop him? And obviously Mike McCarthy in Green Bay, where they they you know, that was a whole kind of mantra over there for years under Ted Thompson. Let's, let's, let's develop young quarterbacks. And Ron Wolf was drafting young guys. Could they get something out of him? Uh, Houston. I mean, when they when they fleece Jerry for a third rounder for, for Drew Henson. I agree with what you said, Jack. If he can show a little something, and if he has to play, then then maybe maybe that's the whole thing. It's the it's a it's all yeah. a maybe. Well, he's only thrown 102 passes in his career, so you know. A lot, there's, a lot. The, there's a lot of work, and, and we'll see. I, I would say this, um, based on what Mike McCarthy has done and his work with the quarterbacks here, I, I, I feel if something could happen, I feel that this is the guy to do it. I mean, he had a guy in Green Bay, Matt Flynn, who <laughs> won a good sure game. Enough, I was just thinking about Matt Sure Flynn. enough, didn't he? <laughs> Broke the well, bank in Seattle. Yeah. Pete Carroll and, and John Schneider went and wrote, hey, here's $27 million or whatever. Yep. Yes. So, so that, that's, that, for me, that's it. That's it. I mean, you know, I mean, if your boy Tommy DeVito can get some shine for a little, two seconds. I mean. Shine shine, and getting paid, two different things. Shine, that, Tommy DeVito was trying to get paid for that that, uh, that, that, that Italian <laughs> shop, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ended up doing it for free. <laughs> the agent messed that up. The agent messed that up. Agent messed that up for him. Let's get our second break in here. Come back right here on the Media Bash. DallasCowboys.com radio. Then he got exposed. <laughs> Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 
5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot Rowdy cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive. Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile banking app, only available on select mobile devices. Message and data rates may apply. Member FDIC. Welcome back into Dear Doctor, the show where I answer life's questions with an ice cold can of Dr. Pepper. Sheila, let's hear from our next caller, would you? Dear Doctor, my friend supported me during a tough time, but what's the right gift that says, thanks for being a shoulder to cry on? Okay, this one's easy. I say give her a delicious Dr. Pepper. Nothing says, thanks, girl. Better than a -a one-of-a-kind soda. Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper is the one you deserve. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back, back, back to back. Media Mash. Media Mash, Media Mash, Media Mash. We have Clarence Hill, Saad Youssef, Jacques Taylor. I am Newey Scruggs. Okay, Saad, for you, Sunday, <clears throat> give me your player that may be off the radar that we'll be talking about for the Cowboys afterwards. Uh, if things go well, I think Marquise Bell will have will have an impact because, again, we you talked about needing to stop the run game. I think uh, if they're able to do that with, you know, pick between Marquise Bell, Damone Clark, one of the two linebackers, uh, I, I think if they're able to play well and uh, and stifle the run, then I think once you get Jordan Love one dimensional, then it's going to be your known your known guys, Deron Bland, Gilmore, J. Ron Kurz, those guys in the back. But I think uh, Damone Clark and Marquise Bell, if you're talking about underrated guys, those are guys I would look for. All right. Jacques Talk is his podcast, by the way. I've never been on it. But anyway. Wow. Um, wow. When you're doing the Jacques Talk podcast, uh, who, who's that cowboy? My guy's the guy who's been flashing the last uh, three weeks. It's Donovan Wilson. Because he can come and bring it and make some things happen in the running game, even from the safety spot. He's a playmaker. And the playoffs, to me, is all about playmakers. Um, you know, your stars have to do their thing. And then you need your supporting cast to show up. And I think uh, Donovan Wilson's been showing up a little bit lately. And uh, it's about his time. Is it unsung? Is Jason, is Ferguson an unsung guy? He's not a star. So, yeah, you can, you can talk about him. I mean, I think that, you know, what the Cowboys do, how they want to play defense, Ferguson, he hates the Packers. He grew up in Wisconsin. Raider fan. Didn't like the Packers. I, told, I called him a hater the other day. You said, you just grew up a hater. <laughs> He said, uh, he said I, yeah, they put it too much in your face. Everybody was a Packer fan. He just went the other way. That's, that's, that's like Nicole. Like that's, that. People like this been hate. You know, it's okay. That's but, Nicole but, the barber. Yeah, it's a barber the same way. But Who's actually got more teams than anybody I've ever made <laughs> yeah. in my life. And all her teams But she's from Dallas and hates the Dallas team. Just cause, cause they, all her teams <laughs> win championships, too. Well, yeah, because she's a bandwagon jumper. But, you oh, know, yeah. but, I, I, but I think Ferguson. I Nicole. But, but I think Ferguson, you know, has a chance. And I would also say. Hankins, you know this run defense as we saw last week is different when Big Hankins is on the field, and and, and you know, one key major key is stopping the run, and Hankins makes a huge difference for this run defense when he's on the field. And with Brandon Cooks, by the way, just a fascinating stat that that is what it is is the Seven twenty one. yard stat. It's the twenty yard stat. They're I believe twelve and zero this year when he has at least twenty yards. Zero and five when he doesn't. <laughs> it, it, it's again. I don't. It's not get a twenty yard completion. You win the game. It's more about the involvement of. Okay, you can't ju- like the offense. Absolutely should one hundred percent run through CD Lamb. No question about it. But you want to get Cooks involved. You want to have. You want to have that threat there. I mean, like I said, twenty yards, twelve and zero. Not twenty yards, zero and five. Yeah, and another thing about thing about Cooks is that. They want to get him involved, but they don't have to force it to him. He's right. just such a good natural receiver. Things come to him. He's, he has eight eight touchdowns. It's one of his highest since, like, 2016. I mean, he's been a big factor. And it's funny because everybody was talking about they weren't getting the ball to CD early. Well, they weren't getting the ball to Cooks early either. And he was talking about he never gave up. He never 
complain. He said, trust the process. It's going to happen. And the things, the, the balls, the cooks, especially in the fourth quarter, just been natural progressions of the passing game. I'm going to go with Deron Bland. And I say it from until last week, you know, Deron Bland had kind of been quiet. But they've got some good receivers out there. Jordan Love, we talked about, number two in the league in touchdown passes. They're going to try and go down the field. And, and this is the kind of game, and this is where you need – you need a, a, a Deron Bland to come through. And Clarence, I know coming up uh, Thursday out of LBs, you, you've got another cornerback. Right. You got Pup out there, Kevin Smith. And, and th- that Super Bowl run they were on, Pup made plays. And I yeah. think you, you're going to need that in the passing game. You're going to, you, you, number one, you're going to need to win the turnover battle. Yeah. And I just look at a guy like Deron Bland as being able to, to come up and, and have a kind of game in which you can just say, you know, hey, man. It's funny. That. It's funny because, and no disrespect, you said, Deron Bland has been so out of his mind that when he doesn't get picks, we're like, okay, he's been quiet. <laughs> you, know? Yeah, like, you know, but but what he's doing is not normal. <laughs> you know, like you know, no, nine, nine picks, picks not you know, none of this is normal. Six Five, <laughs> you know, and he's still good at pass coverage. No, I saw pro, you know, pro but, but the fact that he hasn't had three. no interceptions. Oh well, he's been no. It's like it's and I know this. You know, I'm just saying, but it, but, sure. but, but but that's just how great he's been. If you if you put his year side by side of Gilmore's year when he won defensive player of the year, Deron Bland's numbers are all better. And and you know, last uh, last couple of days, I was just watching the 2010 Packers playoff run. Uh, just you know, when McCarthy won it all, and Tremont Williams was yeah. really good in that playoff run. He had six picks in the regular season, but he was a ball hawk in the in the playoffs. And I, I think you're right. Like you need someone like that who's able to turn things around like that. And, and I think that's what makes this defense good is they have playmakers at every level. And when you have that, that's why they lead the league in turnovers and for takeaways the last few years because it's not just one or two guys doing it. They make you play from behind, and then they got guys who specialize in taking the ball away. I go back to Pop and, and just when he played on those Cowboys. There were so many personalities, but he he just went about his business. Now he slung Jerry Rice out of bounds. <laughs> you know, like, like you don't have to talk to him. If you're going to sl- sling Jerry Rice out of bounds and disrespect him like that, you don't really have to say nothing. And, and Bland kind of just reminds me of that. Here's a guy that just goes about his business and he's playing at a high level. And we've talked about it a whole lot. And it, and, and so, by the way, and I, I don't know if I'll be able to get there Thursday night, but that would be pretty interesting. To see. No, it's, it's, it's going yeah, to be a good, good crowd because several former players are going to come. Kevin Smith has been voted to the College Football Hall of Fame, so we're going to talk to him on that. But uh, several former teammates, Paco Cobbins, a lot of people want to come. Okay, you know, cool. Paco, you know Paco, right? <laughs> so I'll, I'll, you know, well, I'll think, you. I don't yeah. think I'll be able, yeah. don't so, think I'll be able to make it. But anyway, yeah, I'll be at this. Several former teammates are going to come and support him, so uh, it'll be a good night. But yeah, Kevin Smith was was was, was solid. You know, solid to come, and you, you talked about, but he was part of that in, kind of like Bland when he came in. He, he they called him Puppet Dog because he's a dog. Okay, he you know, and he was a great college, All American college cornerback. But they had no fear. Those guys. That's one thing we talk about that Cowboys team. When I always talk about, you know. It don't matter how old you are. It's it, are you ready to win now? You know we we've talked about that. It's time when I was talking to uh, on, on Jock Talk with with, with with Big Joe. It's like are you are you ready to win now? Those, those young Cowboys teams. You know you had the stars. You know with, with Michael and Emmett and Troy, but you had young dogs that weren't afraid but, of anybody that were ready to win. That's why when Pup came in, he went after Jerry Rice. I'm going to attack and throw Jerry. I'm not scared of you just because you Jerry Rice. But uh, I'm Pup. But them cats. Now before Dion showed up, I'm just talking about these yes, guys were yes. doing this before Dion showed up. Yep. No, all right. they, they all was right. all young guys. Fun stuff. Appreciate it. Yeah. Clarence Hill. Side you sell. Spice. Side I said this is not egregious. John John. Calm down, <laughs> calm down, son, calm down. <laughs> I knew Hey, we're right. having fun. I thought you were gonna come up out that chair <laughs> for a minute. I thought it was like when Heckman got called a fan. <laughs> wow, I see. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?